Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can add AI into any .NET and C Sharp application using the Azure Open AI service. Now, this means you'll be able to use any of the models you know and love, GPT 3.5, 4, or even the brand new 4.0, that amazing AI model that allows you to do voice as well. You'll be able to do multi-model, you'll be able to do so, so much stuff, and we're going to use the Semantic Kernel SDK, the de facto library for doing something like this. This will also work with local models if you want to, but in this video I'm just going to use the OpenAI ones, because really I just want to introduce the GPTO model in my application. Now in this video I'm going to use a command line application to showcase all this, but this can be adapted to anything. If you're using a Blazor or Web API, if you're using any form of .NET application, this code will work. And ultimately in the end you're going to end up with something like this where we can just run an application or we can say that the AI asks basically what am I I'm gonna tell it that hey I'm Nick Chapsas and you are my YouTube video producer okay we have that so what do I want I want a title for a video about Azure Open AI and it's going to go ahead and give us that very nice experience that you might know already from a chat GPT I intentionally coded it to work that way you don't have to do that you can also get the immediate response for the whole thing, but I like to stream it to give it a nice experience. Now, this title is really bad, and hopefully the title that made you click this video is better. So let's go ahead and see how we can make exactly that. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. And speaking of DomeTrain, we just opened up our DomeTrain Pro monthly subscription. So you no longer have to subscribe for the entire year to get access to our 30 expertly crafted courses by 13 amazing authors. You can just sign up monthly. That's available for a limited time. And if you sign up now, you get to keep it. Now back to the video. All right, so this is what I have here. I have a simple console application. It doesn't have anything. And the only only library we're going to add here on top of the hosting one because we're going to need that for some DI registration uh, is the Microsoft.Semantic Kernel and that's it. We're not going to need anything else. We're going to handwrite everything. Semantic Kernel is the SDK that will allow us to communicate with those open AI models and it doesn't only work with open AI. You can work with Llama, you can work with any type of model really, but in this case I'm just going to use Azure Open AI because I don't really care about the aspect of it. I just want to have it in a black box and know how to connect to it and then do the rest in my code. And that's exactly what you will also do. Now, something I want to point out is that for this to work for you, you have to request access to the Azure OpenAI service. You can easily do that when you go and create the service. A form prompt appears and you're able to just quickly do that. And you can just after that go and say create. You can choose your region. Be careful because your region dictates which models are available. There are pages showing which models are available in each region. I'm using uh, East US 2 because I want to have access to GPT-4. Oh, and then once you do that, you'll be able to go to the deployment page in Azure OpenAI Studio and you'll be able to say, create new deployment, select the model, and then you see the available models and you can go ahead and deploy it. So currently I've already deployed uh, GPT-4.0, but you can also use uh, the 32K version of 4 or the default 4 or 3.5 Turbo and so on and so forth. It's very easy. You just select the thing, you select how you want your deployment type to be, you select which model version you want, and then you can have uh, some options around content filtering and also the provision throughput. And once you do that, then you can use the deployment name and the model name and you can go to town in your code. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It's extremely easy. There's no other pages after this. The only tricky thing is you do need to request access to be able to do this. But once you do that, you'll be fine. So what I want here is first, I want to create my builder because I want to treat this as an application that you might also have, which will allow you to do DI registration. So I'm going to create an empty application builder and I am going to pass down the arguments for this application. And then what I'm going to do, because I already added that semantic kernel library, which is a very hard word for me to say, by the way, uh, is you'll be able to say builder.services.add open AI. And I'm actually going to use the Azure open AI, that specific registration. You don't have to, you can also use uh, open AI directly, but because we're using the Azure open AI, it is better. And then you can see that we have things like text to audio, text to image, so we can generate things based on an input. We can have audio to text, we can have text generation, files, and then chat completion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the chat completion feature, which will allow me to use the iChat completion service. You'll be able to inject that into your code 
and get a chat GPT like experience. So we're going to register it like this. And then what do we need? First, we need the deployment name. We can get the deployment name from over here is whatever we used and what we named here. Then the model name is this one. I just happen to use the same in both cases here. For you, it might be a bit different. It really depends on how you named things and which model you chose. So you're going to pass that down. Then we're also going to need the endpoint. That is something you can get inside here. So you can go over here. We can say keys and endpoint, and we're going to copy that endpoint over here and then paste it over here. Then we're going to need the API key, which I'm going to hide because well, this is not free, right? Uh, and then we're going to have the model. So I'm going to say model ID is, and let me just scroll a bit down so you can see exactly what's going on here. But model ID, in my case, is the same as the deployment model. So GPT-4. Oh, and I'm going to go off screen and add that API key. And by the way, you can use the first one that will work just fine. All right, so now that we have that, that's basically all the registration we have. So if you have an API, a Blazor app or whatever, all you need to do is say, add Azure Open AI chat completion, and that will do it. And then I'm going to create my app, which is builder.build, and that's it. And then I can get my chat service. All I want to do is app.services. In your case, you can just inject that service through a constructor. But in my case, I'm going to say get required service, I chat completion service, and that's it. And then I'm going to store my chat history in a chat history model because that's all the context we need to pass down to that completion service. I'm going to say var chat history equals new chat history. You can also store multiple of these chat history objects and they will contain all that context in separate objects. So you can have this discussion over here and this discussion over here. And each discussion is one of these objects. In our case, we're going to treat it as a singleton. Then all I'm going to do is add this what am I logic. This uh, AI asks me what am I and why do I have this? Like, do I need this? And the answer is you don't really need it, but it helps because if we have that, we can go ahead and say chat history dot add system message. And this is a message that we tell to the AI, we say, that's what you are. From now on, you're going to behave as whatever that is. So we're going to take that what am I response and we're going to send it as a system message. You have other types of messages as well. You can have the user message, which is us saying something to the AI, or you can also have the add assistant message. The assistant message is basically the AI telling something to us, but we said it on its behalf. So you can also have this behavior and it is treated as context and it's sort of forced context. And now once we have that system message set, we can move on and let the AI say, uh, okay, cool, how can I help? So this is the point where we can actually tell something to the AI and wait for a response. So we're going to capture that by just reading the line. So Nick said whatever the prompt is. And then because I'm the user, all I'm going to say is chat history dot add user message. And we're going to pass in the prompt. And that's it. We just add it into the history. At this point, we're going to let the AI respond. So we're going to switch perspectives. Now the AI is talking and this is where that chat service, chat completion service comes in. So what do we have here in this chat service? Well, we have a bunch of things like the model ID, the API version, the endpoint and so on. But then we have the get chat message contents async. This will sort of have the history and the last response after we send it over, because we can just pass it down by just saying, take the chat history, is we can do something like this. We can say response equals await that. And then the last message is the response. And then the last message in this list will be the response of ChatGPT. But I don't want to have that. I prefer having that stream service. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say, await for each var response in chat, which is a service, get streaming chat message contents, pass down the chat history, and that is it. And now I can start writing. So I'm going to say console.write, and I'm going to say that's the response I want to write. Now we'll change the color to green because green means AI is talking. So let's just move this one here. And then after all that, I'm going to turn it back to yellow. I'm going to give it a new line and I need that to sort of loop. So what I'm going to do is find where we start, which is here. And I'm going to say while true and then slap all that in here. Let it loop forever. And that's it. And basically, 
this is it. Now, there is a small change I want to introduce in a second, but now we can go ahead and say .NET Run. We're going to build this application now, and we're going to tell the chat, what are you? You are a level one orc warrior in World of Warcraft. I don't know. Hey, mate, how can I level up to 10 or whatever? And then the AI will start responding. Now, as you can see, it's very choppy with its response. That's because it's streaming these batches, but it's not writing them in that chat GPT sort of way. What I found is, let me just quickly stop this. We're going to go back in the response. What I found is that if you go here and you fake a task dot delay of 100 milliseconds, then you're going to get that chat GPT like response. So what I'm going to say is you are a troll shaman level one and you want to kill the Lich King, because why not? So here we go. Okay, how can I help? What's your goals in life, little shaman? Here we go. And now we can just wait and we can have this response. As a troll shaman, uh, my goals are multifaceted and both, both the spiritual and pragmatic. I don't think it understood. Oh, defeat the Lich King. Ultimately, the most burning ambition is to comfort and destroy the Lich King. His range will... If you haven't played World of Warcraft, this doesn't really make any sense to you, but to me it does. Now, if we want to have something that's more useful, we can say something like, what am I? You are a junior c -sharp developer. Here we go. Okay, how can I help? How do you allocate an array on the stack? And we expect the AI to be that developer and explain allocating array in the stack is different from traditional heap allocation. In traditional C, you might have static arrays, yada, yada, yada. You get the point. We basically have AI now in our application. And a junior developer wouldn't know that you can use stack alloc and allocate a span. But I digress. But all I want to keep out of this video is that it is extremely simple to build something like this. And I've actually already started integrating this in a few of my own service to try it out because the integration with Semantic Kernel and OpenAI in Azure is amazing. It is so, so simple. I love this thing. And I want to tinker with some really, really cool stuff, which I can't wait to show you. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And do you think you have room for AI to be integrated in your applications? If so, leave a comment down below and let me know how. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.